Rick, happy rainy Tuesday once again. It is another rainy Tuesday in the book. I know. I'm. I am. Uh, I was driving through As. How do they call it? Asmophoric rivers today. I was <laughs> oh, driving yeah, right. through rivers in the sky, Rick. It was very scary. Oh. But that's why I have a, a big truck because I do not want to get uh, creamed on the freeway. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think no matter what, there's a lot of water uh, puddles out there, and or water, you know put puddles up in places you can go hydroplaning pretty quick if yeah we don't know anything that. about this around here i mean we don't know about water water in the street water in the gutters anyway. <laughs> water anywhere well i, I saw this be... morning i think it was on yeah. yeah go ahead go ahead no i saw this morning in the news that for the la area so far this year mm -hmm. we've had how many inches of rain so far do you think a hundred million feels like it it's only it's 20 inches average for this average is 10 we've had 20 inches yeah i'm over yeah. it yeah Hashtag but we need the water but how much more water do we need <laughs> i know we don't need it anymore go away i think we're good anyway so yeah. um you know you may have heard or seen on facebook we have a baby horse for those people who don't know he's so his cool. name is cash and he's absolutely the damnedest cutest thing i've ever seen in my life <laughs> besides really my own children he's so cute he is and poor cash can't get out and kick his heels up he's in a huge stall it's like 12 yeah. 12 by 40 or something so he's in a cute huge stall but he's definitely got mm -hmm. the blues a little bit he enjoys the sunshine much better he wants you know? to get out right yeah, yeah stretch sure. his little long legs so okay yeah. let's talk about something um <laughs> Now, if, if, if you're watching or listening to this and you don't like to get into the weeds to get like some real sort of deep info, then I would just skip this whole episode and move on to the next thing because <laughs> we're going to get in the weeds a little bit yeah, and maybe it's a little, a little bit. bit boring, but in my opinion, it's important. Well, so, yeah, it's critical to how a transaction works and what the experience you're going to have through that transaction, right? Mm -hmm. And just in the last week to two weeks, mm -hmm. I have seen a, a huge shift in the market uh, prior to the prior few months, probably since I don't know when. Um, like I put a house on the market today and uh, I have four or five showings already. So so it's it's go. busy. Yeah, yep. and there's been multiple offers everywhere. I saw mm -hmm. some houses that didn't sell last year come back onto the market in the last two weeks and they're gone, like yeah. immediately. They didn't sell last mm -hmm. year. They were on the market for months. Now they're on the market and everybody wants them because I think maybe some of those buyers are still sitting around and thinking, ah, oh, maybe I should have made a move on that. I just want to mm -hmm. buy a house already. And mm -hmm. so um, we're going to give you some advice about contingencies. Now, a contingency means when you put in an offer that you have a way to wiggle out of it and get your deposit back if you have a contingency. You know, things you're not going to get back is if you paid for an appraisal or you paid for an inspection, you're not going to get that money back if you cancel based on a contingency. But there are mm -hmm. a a lot of contingencies. There's an inspection contingency, a contingency for reviewing all the seller information and then natural mm -hmm. hazard report. And the one we're gonna talk about today specifically is the loan contingency. Yeah, and that's the what, big one. Mm -hmm, and what kind of goes down because you have to write a competitive offer and mm -hmm. you also have to abide by the contract that you have signed. And so normally, a contract says 17 days for a loan contingency. So that mm -hmm. means that you would have, you know, your, your full on loan approval and you're ready to sign off. But oftentimes, I mean, all the time, even though your loan's approved, you have a couple of conditions to fill before you can go to the closing table. So that's where I wanted mm -hmm. to bring you in. You know, the buyer has to remove their contingencies but they are nine out of 10 times still gonna have some conditions. What does that look like? Walk us through that, please. Yeah, and that's super critical. And so thank you for that, uh, Megan. So a loan contingency, what does that mean? 
That means that we as the lender have collected all of the buyer's financials and we've submitted all those financials to the underwriter for review. Those also include the appraisal. So we give the appraisal up front, we collect all the documents up front and then submit that to the underwriter for review. Underwriter, underwriter reviews those conditions and then they approve the loan with conditions. Now, that approval is always a very clean conditional approval, but you wanna get that approval as soon as you can up front to remove that loan contingency. And so that's important because oftentimes, as you know, we talked about multiple offers. When you're in a multiple offer scenario, you wanna be able to shorten those time periods that make your offer very, very competitive to a seller. I mean, the contract is written for 17 days, but I'm removing those now within seven to 10 days. Uh -huh. So if you're in a multiple offer scenario and you can remove yours within 10 days, you're gonna be at an advantage over an offer that's taken 17 days for seller. Uh -huh. um, so that's why we talked about this before over the last few years. It's so important for home buyers to be prepared. And uh -huh. so what I mean by that is, do the initial approval up front with me, collect all their documents. So that way, when you know we have an offer accepted, we can move to loan approval very, very quickly. And by the way, when you do that, take the pressure off because the loan approval is always the big, the big deal, right? And so we get that out of the way within the first two or three days of escrow. The rest of it seems pretty easy after that, but you mm -hmm. want to get that done really right up front. And so you're going to have a, a loan approval the buyer is going to remove their contingencies, but they'll still right. have some conditions. So what what is mm -hmm. what is, what are the last minute conditions look like? Well, typically it's you know, get the homeowners insurance, that kind of stuff, small things like that. Small Nothing of any, you know, yeah, small. So if we already have the W-2s, all the financials that approve the loan, usually within the first three or four days, the buyer doesn't have insurance policies in place yet. So we understand that. But it's just stuff like that. Yeah. Small yeah. things. Yeah. Very good. And so that's, I mean, how often does someone's escrow fall out uh, after they remove their contingencies based on these final conditions? I mean, what would have to happen for their loan to fall out? Yeah, we don't really have any fallout, but we've talked about these over the last few years as well. We talked about things that buyers don't want to do, right? And so the way you have an issue after loan approval is they go out and buy a car, do something like that, and now they don't qualify, now there's a problem. So yeah, once we get into escrow, don't, don't buy cars, don't buy stuff, just lay low, and then close escrow and then do what you wanna do. All right, well, But yeah, just as, long as, everything, just as long as nothing changes in their financial history, then we're good to go. Yeah, all right. Well, that's good. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah. you know, whenever it comes time to remove contingencies and you've got this all mm -hmm. in the contract, as the as the listing agent, sometimes the buyer's agent goes MIA, missing in action. Oh, yeah. You can't find <laughs> them. And you're like, yeah, we've seen that. Yeah. Like, yeah, like if you need some extra time or you need help with something, just say it. Don't just ghost me, as the kids would say, you know, fill me in. Let me yeah. know what's going on. Ask for a couple of days. Jeez yeah. Louise. Yeah, for sure. What I've seen lately, though, in the last few weeks, at least for some reason, we've had uh, several offers where the buyer wants to make an offer, but there's no loan in process yet. So they're trying to scramble to write an offer and get a loan approval. And that's just a lot of pressure, a lot of things going on at one time. And so that's why it's so important to get that, get the loan stuff done up front and then go find the house. Mm -hmm. And then if the listing agent goes missing in action, them, they can do that. But our loan's done. We're good to go. They can, you know, do whatever. Yeah. Good. Well, I agree. There's nothing like, uh, especially when you're buying a house because your nerves are frazzled and yeah. uh, this, that, and the other thing. You have everybody chirping in your ear. Get your loan done first before you find a house yeah. so you're not freaking out about everything all at once. Good advice. So what sure. happened? Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here. What happened mm -hmm. with the, the rates? So it's only Tuesday and we take we released this video on Fridays, but um, what mm -hmm. happened with the uh, rates in the last couple of days? How's it looking? I mean, rates are good. They're better than they were last fall, for sure. They're, they're up a tiny bit the last couple of days. The, what's happening with the banking industry is, you know, causing some volatility in the market. Mm -hmm. um, that will settle down. But overall, mm -hmm. rates are still pretty good. I don't think, but there is a bit of volatility, don't get me wrong, but nothing near what we had last year. Mm -hmm. um, but I think overall rates are good. Now the Fed is meeting tomorrow to talk about monetary policy. 
Yeah. I think we'll see a small bump to the Fed discount rate tomorrow. Now, keep in mind when that happens, that does not mean their mortgage rates go up. Mortgage right. rates could rally and get better tomorrow with that news. Yeah. I'd expect a quarter point. I'm expecting a quarter point bump tomorrow with the Fed. They could go zero, mm -hmm. but I'm expecting kind of a quarter point bump here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's about oh, the smallest bump they've had in the last year and a half. I mean, it's been, don't forget the last several meetings, it's been three quarters at one time, three right. quarters every time. A quarter is really it's just a blip on the screen. Yeah, agreed. Well, good. Well, that's good info. It's positive for the housing market. Now we just need to get yeah. more houses on the market so that we can get yeah. everybody the house that they need by the summertime so they can go on living their best life. That's the right plan. All right. I appreciate you and your 200 years Thank of you. Uh, knowledge there. <laughs> Great hair and all, right? <laughs> yeah. And then we'll talk again next week. Awesome. Thanks, Megan. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.